right now, more questions and answers about Aaron Rodgers and his COVID treatment and what he could be facing from the NFL. And the government sets a deadline for when employees of larger companies need to be vaccinated. This is News 3 Now at noon. Well, many questions remain after it was discovered Aaron Rodgers, who now has COVID, was not officially vaccinated. Could the quarterback face suspension? Mola Lange has more. First down and goal. Rodgers keeps, floats, pass, is caught by Cobb. Green Bay Packers star Aaron Rodgers has his team rolling through the NFL this season. But this Sunday, they'll have to play without him. The league's COVID-19 protocols kicked in after the 37-year-old quarterback reportedly tested positive for the virus, and team officials are not sharing any other details. I'm not going to get into any of our coaches or players' vaccination status. But according to league protocols, vaccinated players can return to the field after two negative COVID tests at least 24 hours apart. Unvaccinated players who test positive must remain in quarantine for 10 days. And Rodgers has already been ruled out for Sunday's game. He was asked about his status in August. Are you vaccinated and what's your stance on, on vaccinations? Yeah, I've been immunized. You know, there's guys on the team that haven't been vaccinated. Uh, I think it's a personal decision. I'm not going to judge those guys. What Rodgers meant by immunization is now under scrutiny. According to the NFL Network, Rodgers applied for vaccinated status with the league after receiving homeopathic treatment from his personal doctor to raise his antibody levels. NFL.com also reports the league denied his request because it did not provide any documented protection from the coronavirus. But throughout this season, Rodgers appears to have been given privileges afforded only to vaccinated players, like holding indoor press conferences without a mask. If Rodgers was getting a pass on COVID rules, there could be long-term consequences, says athletic reporter Kavitha Davidson. We could be looking at a suspension potentially. That speaks a lot to special treatment for stars, which is just not what we can afford when we're still in the middle of a pandemic. And the NFL says it's up to individual teams to enforce league rules around COVID protocols, and it's currently reviewing the Packers situation. Let's head to the Weather Center now. Meteorologist Dana Fulton joins us on this Thursday. Good to see you. Good hey, afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Had to wake up a little early today to get in for the noon show. Right now, we have sunshine overhead. Actually, a really pleasant afternoon. Temperature-wise, uh, we're hovering in the low 40s with dew points in the 20s. That breeze coming in from the south. Because of that, uh, we're seeing our temperatures increase a little bit this afternoon compared to where we were at yesterday. Of course, yesterday afternoon highs were in the low 40s. We're already at that point, so we're likely going to hit the the upper 40s. You could see that temperature trend about 15 degrees warmer today in Lone Rock, 5 degrees warmer for Mineral Point and Janesville. Doppler track has been nice and quiet. That's how it will stay for us through the rest of the afternoon. We had some cloud coverage this morning that is now uh, starting to clear out. There it is now loading for us. We had that cloud coverage moving to the south and that's going to lead to a mostly clear sky for this evening and overnight. Again, high temperatures will peak in the upper 40s this afternoon and then down to the 30s for us overnight. Looking ahead to your Friday, cooler temperatures overnight, but milder temperatures for the weekend, Mark. It's going to get a little more comfortable outside over the next few days. Mid-60s? Mid-60s wow. by next week. <laughs> what month is it? I know, exactly. <laughs> All right, we'll check back in a few minutes. Thank you, Dana. Mm -hmm. The Biden administration has announced a deadline for workers who fall under the new vaccine mandate. The White House announced last week that certain health care workers, federal contractors, and employees at larger businesses must be vaccinated by January 4th. Officials say the federal mandate preempts any state or local laws. OSHA and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services say they will implement the rules. Violations could include fines of up to nearly $14,000 for each infraction with an increased fine if the violation is found to be, quote, willful. The new rule does allow for employees to remain unvaccinated. Those workers must provide a verified negative test to their employer every week and must wear face masks in the workplace. Pharmacy schools and other facilities will stay busy today as kids ages 5 through 11 continue to get vaccinated. Janet Chamelin spoke with some families who were first in line. Okay, good job. We did it. You're all done. Daniela Wilches celebrated her fifth birthday by getting vaccinated. Can you put your hands up in the air and say I'm halfway there? Yay! The Houston area girl was among thousands of children to get the COVID shot the first day it was available to them. What made you decide to get the vaccine for her? Um, we've lost some family members to COVID. And so um, this has been really important for us. And she has some medical conditions which make her 
um, more susceptible. Parents nationwide say the same. From Michigan... It's just relief, like it's an extra burden that's kind of been taken off. To Georgia... It's just a huge relief sending her back to school. Relief is one reaction, but a third of parents in one survey said they'll wait before vaccinating their child. And almost another third said they won't vaccinate their children at all. Still, doctors report there are requests for the doses. Demand has been strong here at Texas Children's Hospital. They currently have 38,000 children signed up for shots between now and Thanksgiving. This is one step closer to a normal life, so we're really excited. The CDC says immunizing 5 to 11-year-olds is expected to prevent about 600,000 new cases from now until March of next year. Okay, see? And for parents who are still cautious. If you compare the risk of COVID compared to other risks that children face, this is a serious problem. And it is a problem for which we now have a highly effective, very safe, preventive measure, and that is a vaccine. Janet Shamley in CBS News, Houston. And a new warning from makers of the Moderna vaccine. They say they're dealing with a production shortage. The pharmaceutical company says it's dealing with production and shipment issues. Moderna now ex expects to ship between 700 million and 800 million vaccine doses instead of the 800 million to a billion doses originally forecasted. The company says some deliveries could be pushed back to 2022, especially those for exports overseas. Moderna plans to give priority to low-income countries. Health officials now say more than 750,000 people have died in the U.S. from COVID-19. Johns Hopkins University also shows over 46 million people have been diagnosed with the virus. The university says the U.S. has the most cases and deaths of any nation globally. It comes as President Joe Biden calls for those eligible to get their booster shots. According to the CDC, 58% of the total U.S. population is fully vaccinated and more than 20 million people have gotten a booster. Now, a noon, a juror in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial has been dismissed. Judge Bruce Schrader said the juror made a racially charged joke to a deputy earlier this week about the Jacob Blake shooting. That shooting led to protests in Kenosha and then to Rittenhouse's shooting incident. When questioned about it, the juror claimed the joke had nothing to do with Rittenhouse's case, but Schrader says it shows the appearance of bias. The, the public needs to be confident that this is a fair trial. And it, I think even at the at the very most, it, it was a it was bad judgment to tell a joke of that nature. It's unclear what exactly the juror said to the deputy. The United Nations says the world isn't doing enough fast enough to navigate the climate crisis. The UN Environment Program's adop Adoption Gap report says issues like increased droughts, floods, wildfires, and heat waves are impacting low-income countries five to ten times faster than money is flowing into them. The report comes as world leaders meet at the COP26 climate summit in Scotland. Wealthy nations have reaffirmed their commitment to contribute $100 billion a year to help poorer nations move away from fossil fuels, but that sum has yet to be reached. And check out these amazing shots of the Northern Lights. They're taken last weekend over Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve in Alaska on Halloween night. A park official said the skies cleared up enough to see the stars and lights before it got foggy again. The wonders of nature. There's more to come on News 3 Now at Noon. We'll check in on what's happening on Wall Street and then stop by a garden in New Zealand to find what could be the world's largest spud. Stay with us. Clean, safe, fun. I wanted it all when we needed daytime care for mom. A oh, Grace's new adult day center is so nice. Now she goes twice a week while I'm at work and loves it. A Grace, caring every step of the way. How to change the way you pizza. Step one, grab a delicious Papa Murphy's pizza. Step two, bake. Step three, chow down on the deliciousness. Feed any appetite when you take and bake the large Big Murphy stuffed pizza. Papa Murphy's, change the way you pizza. The snow, the ice, the bitter cold. Ah, the joys of a Midwestern winter. Keep your family warm, safe, and comfortable with 30% off Feltco windows and no interest for one year. Our energy-efficient windows will keep the harsh weather out and the heat in. So get those drafty windows replaced now. 30% off Feltco windows and soon. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for Feltco. Important health care announcement. 
If people tell you your TV is too loud or if listening in some environments has become difficult, we are requesting your participation in a special program called the 30-Day Challenge. Hearing Life Hearing Centers are seeking people with hearing difficulties to evaluate a new digital mini hearing aid now being released. To take part in this event, you must call. Please get a pencil and write down the number below. All people with hearing aids or hearing difficulties are wanted to take part in the 30-day challenge evaluating a new high-tech device that sits discreetly behind your ear. This hearing aid is Bluetooth enabled and is rechargeable. All hearing assessments are performed at no charge for those taking part in the challenge. Participants will try these hearing aids for 30 days. Call the number below and take the Hearing Life 30-day challenge. McGann Furniture in downtown Baraboo should probably be called McGann Furniture and Flooring because we're the area's oldest and most experienced floor covering store. Our friendly staff will explain the many types of flooring available, answer questions, and make suggestions so you can choose what's best for your home and lifestyle. We always offer free in-home measurements and estimates and use the finest installers in the entire area. And remember, at McGann, we don't inflate prices only to mark them down for a sale. Stop in today and discover the difference. You'll be glad you did. McGann Furniture, downtown Baraboo. With dad's arthritis, he struggles with housework and bathing, so I called a grace. Yes, a grace. With their age at home service, dad gets the help he needs to stay independent at home. A grace. Caring every step of the way. You're watching News 3 Now at Noon. Winner of the National Edward R. Murrow Award for Overall Excellence in Television. Moderna suffers cracks in its armor. The COVID-19 vaccine maker slashed its sales forecast for the year and the number of doses it plans to about 800 million down from as many as 1 billion. The company says some doses meant for delivery this year have shifted to 2022. It also posted weaker than expected sales and earnings for its third quarter. Net income totaled 3.3 billion. Fewer Americans signed up for unemployment benefits last week. According to the Labor Department, first-time filings for weekly jobless claims fell by 14,000 to 269,000. That was better than expected and marks a new pandemic-era low. Meanwhile, work meets play for the end-of-year holidays. According to a Deloitte study, 40% of travelers plan to incorporate their work into their holiday vacation this year. And nearly three in four of those plan to add on an extra day of vacay thanks to remote work options and a healthy appetite for at-home delivery. According to Uber Eats latest cravings report, French fries, pad thai, and garlic naan were the top ordered items over the last 12 months. The most popular cuisines were Mexican burgers and Chinese food. Delivery customers pairing their meals with alcohol favored large margaritas, Tito's vodka, and White Claw seltzers. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com at the New York Stock Exchange. I'm Diane King Hall. Diane, thank you. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials down 95, the NASDAQ up 95, and the S&P 500 up about 10 and a half. Well, a husband and wife in New Zealand have dug up what could be the world's largest potato. Colin and Donna Craig Brown were weeding their garden when Colin's hoe struck something large. Got the fork and jabbed into it and hoisted it out of the ground and holy snapping turtle teeth. What's going on here? Yeah. Like, yeah. What is it? Well, it was so big, it was beyond belief that the portly potato tips the scales at 17.4 pounds. They're now waiting to see if their super spud breaks the Guinness World Record currently standing at a measly 10 pounds. If we have it confirmed, there will be a celebration. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we actually, actually, I'm thinking, since I'm a bit of a, a hobbyist home brewer, I'm thinking about a special vodka. Good for you, Colin. He said he doesn't have any secret gardening tips. He just throws down a bunch of cow manure and straw and sees what happens. He even made a cart to haul the spud around. Well, a bit of warming as we head into the weekend. Dana has a great forecast with News 3 Now at Noon continues. Spot.
spa, spa, spa. The Swim Spa Hot Tub and Sauna Show is this weekend only. Rose and Rose of Spas Hot Tubs and Swim Spas. The largest display in the state. Save up to 60% on all in-stock models. This weekend only in the Exhibition Hall at the Alliant Energy Center, Madison. Those brave men and women of our armed forces. Generations of them. Why should today's burdens fall back onto them? They were there for us. Now let's be there for them. Your local Wisconsin energy providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund are working together to deliver Wisconsin veterans in crisis heat, power, and help staying in their home. But they can't do it alone. Call to donate today. My mom is a very outgoing social person. She was very hesitant at first, leaving her house that she'd been in for over 40 years. She was not really sure why we needed to do this. We walked in and we were like, wow, this looks like a five-star hotel. Now that she's here and she's around people every day and she's being social, she really enjoys her time here. When I talk to her at night, she's happy and she's not sad and lonely anymore. I feel relieved and a lot less stressed knowing she's here and knowing she's safe. What do you think? I love it. Spa, spa, spa. The Swim Spa Hot Tub and Sauna Show is this weekend only. Rose and Rose of Spas Hot Tubs and Swim Spas. The largest display in the state. Save up to 60% on all in-stock models. This weekend only in the Exhibition Hall of the Alliant Energy Center, Madison. When the fourth quarter starts, it's a long-standing and jumping game day ritual that literally rocks Camp Randall Stadium. We'll show you how Jump Around measures on a seismic scale tonight on News 3 Now at 6. It's the giving season with your chance to support local makers and a Lodi team battling cancer. And we've got these for our next question of the day winner. And warmer temperatures are on the way. That's tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7.00. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. And let's check in now with Pam Yankee from the Midwest Farm Report on this nice and dry Thursday. Yeah, and it's beautiful out there, too. It's, you know, you just kind of want to pause and take a deep breath of the fresh air, see all the beautiful colors of that bright blue sky. Let's get it while we can. We're talking today about what's going on with our markets. Uh, dairy farmers are probably getting a little concerned at the rapid decline we've seen as far as our barrel and block cheese price. I know I am. This morning, I talked with Ryan Yonkman, vice president of EverAg, a trading firm that's in Chicago and Platteville that focuses a majority of their attention on what's happening in dairy. He said, basically, what you're seeing is an example of the volatility that dairy farms are going to have to manage through in 2022. Uh, we're starting to really feel the impact of the congestion on both the West Coast as well as the Gulf Coast area on our dairy exports. Dairy exports have been fantastic for the United States, and that includes our Wisconsin dairy products. But now things continuing to slow down with the holiday traffic that's really driving the attention of containers. I talked to a Canadian uh, agribusiness, and they said that the cost of a container has gone from about $2,500 a year ago to $25,000 and more for that very same container this year. So it is just getting so cost prohibitive to try to move some of this stuff. And that was reflected in our export report today for corn and soybeans as well. You know, we may be able to make the sale, but getting the product there is turning into the real nightmare. And if the product can't get there, then a lot of those people on the other end of the sale are canceling. So a little bit of a cold streak that hit the markets today and is continuing. Barrel cheese today down another five and a quarter cents at 151 and three quarters. 40 pound block cheese down three and three quarter cents. One 60 and a half double a butter down a half at 193 and a half and mark i think just like everybody that may be looking for those holiday gifts we just hope that they can get this infrastructure situation with the international markets work through uh ryan yonkman said he's hoping that this is going to be only a short-term glitch not a long-term trend let's hope so
All right. Long take a long-term trend on this weather, though, buddy. Ab absolutely. Keep it coming. I think we've got a few days to go yet. Let's find out. 60. Thank 60. You, Pam. We'll here's, be back in shorts. Yep. <laughs> here's Dana with the good news. I will uh, be bottling up this weather just for Pam and sending it a log over. It is really nice outside. Currently a little chilly, but again, if you've got a layer on, you're, you're, you're good to go. 43 currently in Madison with a bit of sun coming through for us. Some areas still a bit cloudy south of Madison. Uh, our breeze right now from the south in the single digits for our wind speeds, but Doppler track has been staying quiet and, and that's really going to be the trend for the next several days. We're going to enjoy more sunshine. We're going to enjoy milder temperatures and yes, the 60s as we look ahead to the start of next week. Not quite as cool this afternoon. We've tacked on a few more degrees from where we were at this time yesterday and that trend will continue also for Friday, Saturday, Sunday into the start of next week. Each day just getting a little bit warmer outside. Certainly mild for the weekend and most of next week and we're going to stay dry also through the weekend until next Wednesday. Shower chances won't develop until we get into Wednesday afternoon and evening. Could see some rumbles of thunder by the end of next week, uh, but we're going to have quite a dry trend, so you have plenty of time to get your Halloween decorations all cleaned up. Temperatures this afternoon climbing a little bit higher into the upper 40s. As skies become mostly clear tonight, it will cool down just a little bit more, closer to freezing for our overnight lows early Friday morning. In the afternoon, Friday high temperatures will be in the mid to low 50s with that breeze coming in from the south. Picks up just a little bit into the mid to low teens, so we are expecting a little breezier conditions for Friday afternoon. Starting off the weekend Saturday morning with temperatures close to 40. Again, thanks to that breeze coming in from the south and then afternoon high temperatures in the upper 50s, close to 60 degrees. So it does feel a little more uh, almost late spring for us for the start of next week and through the weekend with that warmer trend really settled in. Even in our 6 to 10 day outlook, likely that we're still trending above average. The heart of that warm trend, though, starting to push further off to the New England area, pushing so you can see as that starts to pull away, our likelihood of trending above average tapering off by the middle of the month. Rain chances above average, and that does line up with our shower opportunities that we're seeing towards the end of next week. It gets a little more soggy outside. Today, highs will be in the upper 40s for Friday. Highs in the low 50s and Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 60s. Mid to low 60s for Sunday and Monday, a bit above average. We get a little bit of extra sleep on Sunday, so that just means we get to enjoy uh, more of that nice weather. We're dry for Monday and Tuesday. Rain chances developing through the day on Wednesday, and we're going to hold on to those rain chances for Thursday and Friday. That system, of course, cools us back down, brings us back down to reality after seeing the 60s. Highs will be in the 40s again for Thursday, Friday, and the following Saturday, Saturday with some breezy conditions expected to mix in. Notice possibly a mix at night question mark late Friday, but I'm not concerned about accumulation with that one, Mark. It'll get cool enough. We could see our first snowflakes really swirling around, but at that point, the ground would be quite soggy. It would take quite an event to uh, to make any sort of accumulation. Nice. Days like this are a gift this time of year. It's really nice outside, yes. All right, Dana, thank you. Mm -hmm. There's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. We'll meet our pet of the week, and we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Whether you serve it over pasta or out of a crock, Today's recipe is always welcome. It'll make your taste buds very happy, too. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Discovering the perfect paint for your home has never been easier with Zinsser Smart Coat. Plan smart with interactive tools at smartcoat.com. Buy smart in-store or online for home delivery. And paint smart with this advanced paint and primer in one. Say hello to Sensor Smart Coat, the next generation of intelligent paint, exclusively at Menards. It's time to choose a Medicare plan. So why not choose a five-star Medicare Advantage HMO plan from Quartz? Starting as low as $0 per month, including medical, hospital, and prescriptions, and dental, vision, and hearing aid benefits. Learn more. Call us today to find a plan that fits your budget and your lifestyle. 
Quartz offers the region's top-rated Medicare Advantage plans, and they're now even more exciting. New for 2022, the Quartz Cash Card gives you the freedom to spend up to $460 annually on a variety of health-related products and services. And Quartz gives you access to an all-star team of high-quality providers featuring UW Health, giving you the five-star treatment you deserve. Because at Quartz, you're the star of our five-star Medicare Advantage plans. Don't wait. Call now to get plan details from Quartz or speak with one of our enrollment specialists today. I have worked at HuffCore for the last 36 years. HuffCore, closing the plant, moving production to Mexico. I gave my life and my body to that place. Ron Johnson pushed through a tax law that rewards outsourcing. Companies can bring profits back from Mexico tax-free. And worse, Ron Johnson profited personally from outsourcing. He has doubled his wealth since taking office. Tell Ron Johnson to stop putting his profits above our jobs. I matched with this cutie on a dating site. We texted all the time, but never met up. Then he asked to send him gift cards for a plane ticket to see me. And that's when I remembered a tip I got from the AARP Fraud Watch Network. Gift cards? This is a romance scam. Spent that money on self-care instead. Recognize fraud sooner, so your money lives longer. The younger you are, the more you need AARP. Over the years, we've made all sorts of chili. Everything from chunky Texas style, which of course doesn't have any beans, to a blonde chicken version that's light and bright. And today, we're cooking up a big pot of chili that combines lean ground beef and some flavor-packed Italian sausage. And the results are nothing short of lip smacking delicious. The first thing we do is brown some lean ground beef, along with a good amount of Italian style sausage that we remove from the casing. After that cooks for a few minutes, we toss in some chopped onion and garlic and let that cook for a bit. At this point, we add a couple cans of kidney beans, crushed tomatoes, a small can of tomato sauce, and a bunch of spices. After this simmers for half an hour or so, it's ready to serve. Talk about a dish that'll warm you up from the inside out. Maybe top each bowl with some shredded cheddar cheese or a dollop of sour cream. Or hey, why not both? To get your hands on this flavor-packed chili recipe, simply visit our website and look for what we call Italian-style chili pot. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we have a chili-licious way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. It's not a word, Howard. It's time to introduce you to our pet of the week. November is Adopt a Senior Animal Month, so we'd like you to meet Minnie. She's a 16 and a half year old. She enjoys other pets and snuggling. Minnie's a stray found in Stoughton and is currently looking for a retirement home. What a great face. She looks snuggle up with that. If you'd like to help the Humane Society, check out these events on Saturday. Greenbush Bakery is holding its last beer and donuts event. 10% of all sales will be donated to the Humane Society. Also, Honeybee Cannabis will host a Glass for Good event. There'll be a live glass blowing demonstration, a raffle, and baked goods. And you'll be happy to know last week's pet, Freedom has been adopted. I love that dog. If you're interested in adopting Minnie or checking out the other animals at the Dane County Humane Society, go to giveshelter.org. Mark, Minnie needs a retirement home. Yeah, I think you could use another cat, couldn't you? I, she looks just like my cat, Thor. So there, there you go, one more. We could do, uh, if anyone rescues Minnie, let me know. We'll exchange photos. They, they, look, they look very similar, that Russian blue color. Good deal. A, a chili-tastic, was that the word? That's not a yeah, word? Okay, a chili, a, a chili-tastic forecast ahead, guys. I want chili. I don't want that word, though. <laughs> we are going to be sunny for most of the rest of the afternoon. The cloud coverage clearing out. Still a little cloudy towards Janesville, but north of Madison, the cloud coverage certainly clearing out. Right now, and uh, temperatures close to 43. This afternoon, we will be in the upper 40s. By this weekend, though, we're in the 60s. We'll get a little extra hour of sleep on Sunday. We'll stay in the 60s for Monday, and then by the end of next week, our rain chances start to increase. Such as some showers expected for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That'll cool us back down closer to average by next weekend. This weekend, Looks fantastic. Beautiful. All right. Thank you, Dana. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back here at 4. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.